Hello 3D printing friends! Today on the BV3D channel we'll print a critical spare part that could keep your printer printing in case of an emergency. Stick around and we'll get into it right after this. I'm Brian and you are watching BV3D. Hi, welcome back! Hey, if you're new here and you're wanting to learn about 3D printing, 3D modeling, and other 3D printing related stuff, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. Okay, so today we're going to print an emergency backup extruder. Now, this isn't something that everybody is going to need. There are a lot of 3D printers these days with extruders made of aluminum, but there are also still a lot of printers with injection molded plastic extruders. And while injection molded plastic extruders are okay, sometimes the stress of their job gets to them and they just snap. Okay, it's mechanical stress and what tends to happen is the filament loading arm breaks and then the idler bearing that's attached to it isn't able to keep the filament pressed against the drive gear on the extruder stepper motor. And the net result is you can't print and you're going to have to order a replacement extruder assembly. And of course your printer is going to be down until the part comes in and you install it. Now, on the one hand, you could order an aluminum extruder now and just have it handy when the time comes and it'll only cost you about 15 bucks. Or what if you had a machine that could easily make new parts for itself? You could print a replacement for about 50 cents worth of filament and have that ready to go. Both options are perfectly fine, but sometimes it's just kind of cool to know that your printer can print its own spare parts. And so that's what I'm going to do today. This particular one is my remix of a thing named the most ultimate Creality CR10 slash S4 slash S5 slash Ender2 slash Ender3 slash Ender4 Extruder Strong Upgrade by Thingiverse user AEH810. <laughs> that's, uh, that's certainly a name, huh? Now there's a link for this thing and my remix down in the description. All my remix does is fix some weirdness in the mesh of the extruder arm. The geometry is a little bit incomplete. So anyway, to save you some headaches, I posted the remix back onto Thingiverse and over on Prusa printers. I sliced this in Prusa printers and used some custom supports using the paint on supports feature. There were only a couple of places they were needed. I printed these in red Polymaker Polylite PETG. I used 0.2 millimeter layer height, four perimeters, 30% infill, and I printed at 240 degrees Celsius on a 70 degree bed. And the two parts together took less than two hours to print. I chose PETG because sometimes the extruder stepper motor gets hot, and so I wanted something with a little more heat resistance than regular PLA. The neat thing about this extruder is that you harvest the existing hardware from the stock extruder. So all the screws and the spring and the idler bearing come over from the broken extruder. Although in this case, my extruder isn't broken yet. I'm going to take it off the printer so I can show you how to put the printed one on. So hopefully the stock one stays unbroken. I'm doing this on my Ender 3 V2, but this will work for lots of Creality printers and probably lots of printers from other companies as well. You don't have to do any of this right away, of course. If we were dealing with a car, you could think of this part of the video as a tutorial about how to replace a flat tire with a spare so you could get back on the road. Now you can do it now for the practice and then undo it and reinstall the stock extruder. Or you could leave the printed one on after installing it and then the stock extruder goes back in the trunk and becomes your spare. Anyway, the first step to install it is to start with the printer turned off at room temperature with the filament unloaded. If you have an extruder knob, remove it. Disconnect the Bowden tube from the extruder by pressing the retaining ring and removing the tube from the coupling. If there's a collet clip preventing the retaining ring from being pressed in, remove that first. Then unplug the cable from the extruder stepper motor. While maintaining pressure on the extruder arm, remove the screw, securing it to the extruder body. This is a long screw that also goes down into the stepper motor. With the screw removed, carefully release pressure on the arm and remove the arm and the tensioning spring. Remove the three remaining screws on the extruder stepper motor, supporting the motor with one hand while you remove the screws with the other. Both the stepper motor and the extruder can be set aside. On the stock extruder arm, a screw and a lock washer are holding the idler bearing in place. Loosen the screw and then remove the bearing from the arm. Secure the idler bearing to the new extruder arm using the screw and lock washer. 
The screw will cut its own threads into the arm. Tighten the screw enough to keep the idler bearing in place, but loose enough to allow the bearing to spin easily. Don't over-tighten the screw, or you might strip the threads and then you'll need to print the arm again. Unscrew the Bowden tube coupling from the stock extruder body and then screw it into the printed one. It, too, will cut its own threads on the way in, but as with the printed extruder arm, be careful not to over-tighten it or you'll strip those newly cut threads and you'll need to print a new extruder body. Attach the new extruder body to the bracket on the x-axis arm using the three short screws. The screws go through the extruder body, through the bracket, and into the extruder stepper motor, just like they did on the original part. Note that one of the screws has a countersunk head, and that should go in the hole with the matching countersink. With the extruder body secured to the bracket and to the stepper motor, place the tensioning spring on the extruder body. Then hold the extruder arm in place to compress the spring. While holding the arm in place, insert the long screw through the extruder arm into the stepper motor and tighten it. It needs to be tight but still loose enough that the arm can move freely. Don't over tighten it or you may break something. On some printers, that long screw may be a little bit too long if only by a millimeter. If that's the case for you, use a slightly shorter screw if you have one available. If you don't have a shorter screw, you can try filing down the end of the original screw a little bit to improve the fit. Hey, we're almost done. Plug in the extruder stepper motor's cable. If you removed an extruder knob at the beginning, put it back on the motor now. And the last thing to do is connect the Bowden tube back into the coupler on the extruder body and put the collet clip back on if you removed one at the beginning. Congratulations, your printer has made a spare part for itself and you've got it installed. Since these are cheap to print, you can make two sets for about a dollar, you might want to print another one to have handy, just in case. If you want, you can keep using this extruder to see if it works well for you, or you can switch back to the stock extruder, keeping this one ready as your spare. I printed a second set of extruder parts using the printed extruder. In fact, those are the parts I showed in the time lapses of the prints. And I've been using a printed extruder on another printer for a couple of months now, and it's been just fine. So there's nothing wrong with using a basic printed extruder. As far as I can tell, they work just as well as the stock ones, and they're cheap to replace. But if you find yourself wanting to move up to a metal extruder with dual filament drive gears or something with a gear reduction drive to push filament harder, there's nothing wrong with spending the extra money and installing one of those instead. That's one of the neat things about 3D printing. You've got a lot of options to choose from. Well, 3D printing friends, that's about all the time we have for this episode. And now that we're at the end, let's go print something cool. Hey, real quick before you go, I wanted to say thanks for being one of the super awesome people who sticks around all the way to the end, and thanks for all the likes, comments, and shares. And an especially big thanks to those who directly support what I do. You're all wonderful for doing that, and I really appreciate it. If you liked this episode, a thumbs up would be great, and if you'd like to help support the channel, check the description for ways you can do exactly that. And hey, if you haven't already subscribed, please do. It's absolutely free, and it's an excellent way to help keep me making these videos for you. Well, that's it for this one. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time here on the BV3D channel.